few months after the OJ trial, place, a courtroom in LA. The play begins in the courtroom. Above the stage is a large TV screen for the audience to see. In the courtroom, there is a TV on the stand with a VCR underneath it. A prosecuting attorney, who is African American and appears to be in his mid-twenties, is asking questions to his white middle-aged client. Middle, middle-aged male client. Prosecutor. Mr. Daniels, how did you feel when you first found out that one of your customers, uh, the defendant, Mr. Robert Waters, was over here? Uh, uh oh, yeah, excuse me, I'll try again. Mr. Daniels, how did you feel when you first found out that your customer, that your customers, uh, the defendant, Mr. Robert Waters over here, had put himself on the end of one of your videotapes? Was anger a sense of betrayal? What? All the above. It mean that it was at the end of my, this is Daniels talking. All the above. It mean that it was at the end of my favorite movie, Malcolm X. Well, not only at the end of Malcolm X, but the midpoint where it's time to rewind and put in part two also. And being that if, and being that he was white, plus doing a horrible racist impersonation of African Americans, uh, people with whom I have a great sense of empathy, love, and understanding for, well, let me put it to you this way. I felt like I could kill him. And right now, I still feel like I could. But I expect to do it financially by suing his ass, if you know what, I, if you know what I'm saying. Robert Waters, who is sitting on the left side of the stage, looks up a little nervously. Any other emotions you felt when you saw him at the end of your tapes? Fear. I'd have to say fear. I mean, you know, I really thought this customer of mine was a nice guy. He, he didn't seem racist. And, and once he even told me he was a Christian, but they pulled this crap at the end of at, in the some of my tapes, vandalizing my property, without even asking me if I could do it. Well, it sure in hell is not my customer now. So, why the fear? Because, well, after I saw what he did at the end of my Malcolm X tape, I, I called the police. We went through the computer, we saw all the other movies he had rented from me. I checked them out, and not only had he put more racist crap at the end of my videotapes, he was talking crazy shit. Such as, Bible, Bible prophecy crap about Arachne and Babylon. Also, at the end of one of the tapes, a reggae tape of mine, which I think is the best reggae tape I have in my store, he was, he was babbling something, chanting something, something that didn't make any sense at all. Uh, it was almost as if he was uh, saying to me, look, I'm not only racist, I'm a crazy religious fanatic who might pull a Charles Manson on your ass if you mess with me. I mean... He scared me. What, what, what else can I say? He scared me so much from what he did to my videotapes and from what he put on them that that you ended up getting a restraining order put on Mr. Waters, right? Yeah. Uh, you darn right I did. I mean, I haven't been able to have one decent night's sleep since I looked at the end of my tapes, especially when I saw his enchanting and talking prophecy crap. I mean, Manson was into that. <laughs> to the court. <laughs> you, ever, you ever read the book Helter Skelter? So, I hope he has a lot of money on him to pay me for the damage he has caused, not only my case, but my mental well-being as well. Prosecutor to judge. Your Honor, Your Honor, it is in our interest that we play some of the tapes Mr. Waters has vandalized. May we play them for you? Waters looks down and shakes his head. Judge, you have the equipment with you. Uh, how long do they run? About 12 minutes. 